wo wir gerade bei KI sind. Wieso zur Hölle kriegt die KI eigentlich keine Hände hin? Bei Midjourney jetzt, ne? Bildgenerierung. Ist ja mittlerweile besser geworden, ist aber so ein, so ein Punkt, ne? So ein, so ein großes called Problem, to create. das wir äh, identifiziert hatten, als wir über künstlich erstellte Bilder gesprochen haben. Diese Frage klärt Vox. A post-apocalyptic giraffe astronaut generated. Genghis Khan playing a guitar solo. Pixel art generated. A man holding a delicious apple. Ah, uh, what's with his hands? Ja, Stable Diffusion. Weiß nicht, also ich bin echt ein Midjourney Fan. Why can't AI art make hands? It doesn't matter what AI art model you use. If you have a man holding a delicious apple, his hands will look weird holding it. Why is this so hard? Seems easy enough, right? We naja, weil die Haltung der Hand immer anders ist. Damn, er hat einen deutlich geileren Videohintergrund als ich. Ich bin neidisch. Mist! Wo kriege ich jetzt einen Kamin her? Got this weird situation where AI art can instantly make Abraham Lincoln dressed like glam David Bowie, but struggles with a woman holding a cell phone. This isn't just a weird... Also, äh, was ich vermute ist, äh, da die KI ja diese Bilder aus ganz, ganz vielen Samples erstellt und die Hände immer ganz anders geformt sind und ganz anders Dinge halten, werden die halt so weird übereinander gelegt, dass da nichts Sinnvolles bei rumkommt. Glitch. The struggle of AI art with hands can actually teach you something bigger about how AI art works. I mean, what is so hard about this? I asked an artist who has taught thousands of people how to draw hands from imagination. Before someone becomes or starts training to be an artist, like officially training, it's pattern recognition. You just grow up seeing a whole bunch of hands <laughs> and you start knowing what hands look like. You learn how things look by living in the world and recognizing patterns. An AI is similar, but has key differences. Imagine an AI is like you, but trapped in a museum from birth. All the machine has to learn from are the pictures. Ist das jetzt die Erklärung des chinesischen Raums? Das chinesische Zimmer ist der Name für ein Gedankenexperiment des äh, Philosophen John Saul. Mit seiner Hilfe versucht Saul die Meinung zu widerlegen, dass digitale Computer allein durch Bewusstsein erlangen, äh, allein dadurch Bewusstsein erlangen können, dass sie ein passendes Programm ausführen. Bei dem Gedankenexperiment stellt man sich einen geschlossenen Raum vor in dem ein Mensch, der keinerlei Chinesisch versteht, in chinesischer Schrift gestellte Fragen anhand einer in seiner Muttersprache verfassten Anleitung in chinesischer Schrift sinnvoll beantwortet. Personen außerhalb des Raumes folgern aus den Ergebnissen, dass der Mensch in dem Raum chinesisch beherrscht, obwohl das nicht der Fall ist. Das Experiment sollte zeigen, dass ein Computer ein Programm ausführen und regelbasierte Zeichenreihen verändern kann, ohne die Bedeutung der Zeichen zu verstehen, die Fähigkeit Syntax zu befolgen, soll nach Saal also nicht zur Semantik führen, also zur, zur Bedeutung führen, äh, befähigen. Nach Saal müsste ein Computer ähm, dafür Intentionalität aufweisen. Mit Hilfe seines Gedankenexperiments wollte Saal nachweisen, dass es nicht ausreicht, dass eine programmierte Rechenmaschine den Turing-Test besteht, um als intelligent zu gelten. Erfolg im Turing-Test stellt also kein ausreichendes Kriterium für sogenannte starke künstliche Intelligenz dar. Darüber hinaus stellt es die kom äh, komputionale stellt die komputationalen Theorien des Geistes in Frage. Ja, ähm, Entschuldigung. And the little placards on the side. Apple. A red apple on a brown table. That's like the images it sees from the web and the descriptions that go with them. It's similar to how you learn, but locked in that museum. If you want to understand an apple, you can rotate it in your hand. You can watch it whenever you want. If AI wants to understand an apple, it has to find another picture of an apple in the museum. Pattern recognition has allowed AI and people to draw decent apples. But the processes differ. You start training to become an artist and now you're like, okay, now I have to learn the rules. And that's where it becomes very different from how AI is learning. Artists, in order to draw something complicated, we tend to simplify things into basic forms. And so when you look at a hand, you pretty much have the big blocky part of the palm 
right? You have the front, you have the back, and then you have the thickness. Uh, so you can pretty much just make that into like a square with some thickness to it. Then an artist can add all the style and texture and detail they want. AI works differently. Look at this hand. The shapes are bizarre, but the AI has done a great job showing the light and texture here. Remember, the AI knows how things look, but not how they work. So these patterns in pixels. Genau, also du kannst sozusagen immer davon ausgehen, dass ein Apfel gezeichnet wird, aber wenn es darum geht zu zeigen, was in also was was der Apfel ist, ne? Also solange die KI nicht reinbeißt, weiß sie nicht, was der Apfel macht. Pixels are easy to understand. It never learned, however, that fingers don't really bend like this. It doesn't simplify to forms. Remember, it's trapped in the museum. So it is just trying to guess where hand-like pixels ja, also das ist im Endeffekt tatsächlich Chinese room. should be without knowing how hands work. Es entsteht halt kein, äh, ne, du hast den Syntax, aber nicht die Semantik dahinter. Du weißt, wie es aussieht, wie es gebaut wird, aber du weißt nicht, was es bedeutet. Like we do. But listen, I find this kind of dissatisfying. I mean, I'm basically just saying that AI can't draw hands because it's not a person. But AI also doesn't know anything about construction and it can still make a beautiful skyscraper in New York City. So to understand this better, I spoke to two people who have worked with generative art models. Elin Du is a grad student whose heart is in robotics, but you know, AI art is like a big deal now. So he got pulled into it. Because of how popular these models have been in generative art, uh, I've also been like reading a bit on that. And I talked to Roy Schilkrat, who has a super varied resume, but has been teaching about generative art since 2018. Good students that come in uh, that are trying to break those models, take them to the next level. Talking to them helped me figure out three big reasons. Not every reason, but three big reasons that hands are tough for AI art models. The data size and quality, the way hands act, and the low margin for error. For the data size, let's go back to the museum idea. The museum the robot hangs out in, it has a ton of rooms dedicated to faces, but not so many rooms for hands. That means it has less to learn from. Just as an example, available data sets like Flickr HQ has 70,000 faces. 70,000! And this popular one annotates 200,000 pics of celebrity faces for lots of details, like eyeglasses or pointy noses. There are a ton of great hand data sets that can really understand hands, like this one with 11,000 hands, but these may not have been used to train the AI that makes art. That data scarcity combines with the quality and complexity of the data. Hand data in the art museum isn't yet annotated to show how they work, like the celebrity's pointy noses. What they say, man bräuchte halt tausende Sachen, die die jede Rotation, jede Bewegung, jede, jede Form, die eine Hand annehmen kann, äh, quasi zusammenstellt. Is, there is an image and there is a person in the image and the person is holding an umbrella. You don't give the machine a lot of clues saying, this is a person holding the umbrella. The thumb is going from one side of the handle and the fingers are curled and then the thumb is covering the index finger, but not the other ones. All that is made worse because hands do lots of things compared to, say, faces. So there's a pretty common like portrait photo face. There are a lot of these photos online. And the thing is, everything's very well centered, right? Like eyes are always like around here. Like there's always this order. That's not true of hands, which can do this. Genau, ein Gesicht sieht immer so aus, wie es aussieht. Ist nicht mal auf den Kopf gestellt. So, ne? This. This. Klar, simpler Punkt, aber völlig einleuchtend. I swear I'm sober right now. Stan mentioned this too. How many fingers do you see right now? Like two or three? So like it doesn't know there's five because sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three, sometimes four, sometimes five. You can see these problems with AI hands, but the jankiness is all over AI art. Just look at horses. You can often have like three legs, five legs, six legs. The model does not learn to explain this because there's too much diversity and it doesn't have as much bias as we do. Okay, did you hear that last part he said? Good, because it's really important. Doesn't have as much bias as we do. We care a lot about hands and need them to be perfect. There is a low margin for error. But because the model doesn't understand hands, hasn't seen many, and because hands act weird, it makes pictures that are like hands it's seen in the museum, but not an exact hand. 
that's good enough for a ton of stuff, but not hands. Here, let me give you some examples. Come over here. So I typed, make me a person with exactly five freckles. So this one's from Dolly2, this one is from Stable Diffusion, and this one is from Mid Journey. So it's like, you know, great job. You've, you've got, you know, a red hair- <laughs> Somebody with freckles. Person, they're more likely to have freckles, but there are not exactly five freckles here. Here that doesn't really matter, because we see a freckly So, na, und, und welches Modell fandet ihr jetzt besser? Face, but Ich hab da ja einen Favoriten. Oh, Zufall! Here. here that doesn't really matter, because we see a freckly face, but hands require higher standards. Look at our apple holding man again. I made three other variations. The hands are all weird, but don't look at them right now. It changed the shirt stripes, the buttons, the apple style. None of that matters because it's stripe-like and button-like and apple-like, but <laughs> hand-like isn't good enough. I came away from this thinking a couple of things. AI art is basically bad at art. We're just able to see it with hands. And B, it's never going to get any better. But both of those things are a bit wrong. I will say that the newest AI art generator to come out at the time of this video is Midjourney version 5. Exakt, und das kann's. And they made some progress with hands. Das kann's wirklich viel, viel besser. Ich meine, schaut euch mal das an, das ist der Wahnsinn. For sure. But it's not totally fixed yet. Don't tell the AI to hold an umbrella. I think they're like spending lots of time on like some things that you appreciate, which is why you like the images and a lot of stuff that you don't actually even notice. I think like for a lot of natural scenery or something like that, like I feel like model might be better at that people. Also, er spricht auf der Geschwindigkeit, wo ich gerade noch so mitkomme. Meine Güte. And they are working on two things. First, they have the AI look at a ton more pictures, which requires more computing power. They're trying to solve that on a big scale because if you want to train on more than a handful of images, if you want to train on more than a hundred images, this would take tremendous resources from you to retrain the model itself. The other solution might be to invite more people into the museum. There's an interesting analog. So like, have you heard of like ChatGBT? The big difference was that it basically used human feedback. So like they generated many, many sentences and asked people to rate which ones are good and which ones are not good. They basically fine tuned the model so that it would generate sentences that are convincing to people. I guess it would require a lot of engineering to get people to label so much data. But I think if we could just get like people to rank how good the images are generated. Vielleicht braucht man einfach wie bei Wikipedia Kuratoren für dieses Museum, die einen, einen freiwilligen Job machen, Feedback zu geben. Created by these models, then like a lot of these issues will go away actually, because they're just training the models to do what people like. Das wird automatisch irgendwann kommen, dass das funktioniert. It's not just the hand, teeth and abs, anything where there's like a pattern, a large amount of something, it doesn't know the rule of there are this many, because it's trained on different amounts. Ja, völlig realistisch, ne? Realistische Vorstellung männlicher Körperproportion und dass wir das so im Internet sehen, meine lieben Freunde, bedeutet, dass das ein gewöhnlicher Typus ist, den man zu erwarten hat, wenn man das eintippt, ja, weil es natürlich das zeigt, was am meisten eingespielt wird oder was dem nahe kommt, was common ist, müssen wir uns leider eingestehen.